You don't already have to be the Sorcerer Supreme to enjoy this video because these are the best Doctor Strange comics for beginners. With Hoof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. Kicking off this list and I'm already going to shoot myself in the foot because I'm giving you my highest recommendation because we're going to be starting with Doctor Strange The Oath. And nope, don't expect me to do that effect for all of them, but this was one of the first solo Doctor Strange books that I remember reading. And that's not just me looking at this with nostalgia glasses because this is a fantastic yet short story. He's trying to solve his own attempted murder which I just think is the perfect setup for anything to do with Stephen Strange. It's got all that hubris and egotistical elements that you'd expect. You probably already know his origin story, so this is going to be one of those books that just throws you into the middle, but you don't really need to know a lot about what happened before. But this will allow you to see what Doctor Strange is like on Earth, and also what he's like in the mystical realms, all whilst telling you this really fun detective story. He's got a good amount of twists and turns as well, and I think the art's got this really classical feel to it. It sometimes reminds me of Tim Sale, and it's also written by Brian K. Vaughan, who you might know from doing Why the Last Man, Paper Girls, Saga, but maybe you do just want something quick, easy, fun, and entertaining and this would probably be the one that I'd recommend most. Unfortunately this is a little bit difficult to get your hands on so you might have to do some digging but I do also believe that it's available on Marvel Unlimited so you could probably start reading this today. But if you did want the origin story of Doctor Strange there's two books that I'd recommend to you and the first one would be Doctor Strange Season 1. I'm not sure if they officially just changed the name to it but it seems like it's often just referred to as Strange Origin now and this line was really interesting because it was a series of books that was supposed to get people into these different characters. So this is everything that you would need to know to catch you up on who Doctor Strange actually is in the Marvel Comics universe. Obviously, yeah, it's not going to tell you absolutely everything, but you could read this and then pretty much jump into any other Doctor Strange title. But for a line that was supposed to get people into comics, I think it'd be stupid of me to not recommend this. Do I think it's the greatest Doctor Strange story of all time? No. And sure, maybe you want an origin story that goes even further back than that and you want to know about him just being Mr. Strange and unfortunately this probably won't take you that far. But this will pretty much lead you up until the moment when Doctor Strange announces himself in the Marvel comic universe. Next up in one of the more popular recent Doctor Strange runs, but I'm going to go with Jason Aaron. And if you loved his run on Thor, then you're definitely going to enjoy this because admittedly there's quite a lot of similarities. I mean primarily in the structure because there is a villain in this story who blames Doctor Strange for everything because of the fact that he used is magic and the enemy is a guy that just believes in science. I'm really dumbing down that plot because of the fact that I'm kind of really dumb so that's just the way my brain works. But I still really like this series and it was the first Doctor Strange title that I was picking up in single issues. It's decent in length and it's a fairly recent run that's quite dark and it might be a bit grittier than you expected. And what I feel that Jason Aaron did well is that he looked at what it meant to be the Sorcerer Supreme and how that battle between magic and science really has Doctor Strange in the middle of it. And this run highlighted what what a burden that would be and why it's important that we have somebody in this comic universe like Steven who's able to handle that. This does also connect quite well to the wider Marvel universe because it's part of that Marvel Now era that I know a lot of people tend to overlook but I really enjoyed for the most part. And if you do know a little bit about this character, maybe what you learned from the movies, then I do think that this would be a pretty safe jumping on point. And I am also recommending this because it was recently printed in Omnibus and you can pick it up from the channel's sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping and amazing customer services and if you use code woof woof you'll get two dollars off your order and if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together make sure you use code woof woof ship it together for five percent off your entire order don't worry you can just copy and paste them from the description down below and you can use these codes as many times as you like improving what i just said that i am quite dumb i forgot that i mentioned that there was two origin stories that i'd recommend and the second is just called strange it was printed in 2004 and it was written by j michael straczynski and it is just a six issue mini series and I say just, but at the same time, he is really great at catching you up on what you know about this character. It was also set as part of the Marvel Knights imprint, so it's coming out at a similar time as stuff like Punisher and Daredevil. And it is set within that same tone because it is quite grounded and realistic, even though it is a guy that is literally creating magic. But you get to see him traveling to the mountains, learning everything that he can about sorcery, and also getting his first taste of that experience of battling within these realms. I feel like this is a very earnest and honest take on the character that a lot of people often overlook. And yes, sure it is pretty much just an origin story and it doesn't really show you a lot about Doctor Strange you know when he's got the cape and the yellow gloves which I really hope he gets in the second movie like you had them at the end of Thor just give him the gloves back but yes again this is a little bit difficult to find I read it a good couple of years ago but it has stuck in my mind and I do think it would be great for new readers when I do me where to start list I always try to recommend as many different jumping on points as possible because I don't think that there's a one size fits all kind of rule and you might want to experience Doctor Strange as part of a team book while there are a fair few of 
amount of Avengers titles that you can jump into. So I know he's appeared in a handful of the Jason Aaron issues, I remember seeing him throughout the Hickman run, and half of the fun of Doctor Strange is seeing how his arrogant personality contrasts against other people. A recent example that I really like, and it was only for a few issues and I wish it would have lasted a bit longer, we did briefly take over the Savage Avengers, which is a title that I absolutely love and I'm really glad that it's getting an omnibus later this year. But that was great because he brought his own dynamic to this barbaric team. But you're probably thinking, how can I recommend Doctor Strange in any kind of group setting without mentioning the Defenders? This team is pretty much the main reason why Doctor Strange never really appeared in the Avengers. He was already too busy with these guys and I think it's just such a dynamic and fun team that it's worth exploring because I do feel that they're often overlooked. But Strange has been a staple of the Defenders from the very beginning, but the reason why I think this works so well is because it's such a smaller group. You have just got characters like the Hulk and Namor, the Silver Surfer and of course Doctor Strange working together but they're often not really expanding that much. Yeah sure other people have joined throughout the years but the main two ones that I'm going to recommend is firstly the one that was recently done by Al Ewing and the one from 2005 by JMD Matias. And because the team's smaller you can learn about Doctor Strange a lot quicker than if you were just reading an Avengers book. You also get to see how his magic works alongside characters that have never really been exposed to that and like I said he's got the Silver Surfer in it so what's not to love? And you can pick up some of the classic first titles which I read a few issues of in preparation for this video and they're definitely classic and by that I mean I legally have to say that it's incredible and the only true starting point and everything else shouldn't be suggested or else I'm gonna get a bunch of 50 year old grown ass men complaining in my comment section. Times have changed but in saying that I don't immediately write off anything that's silver or bronze age and there's a guy from my gym who watches my channel so you know shout out to Aaron and when I told him that I'm doing a where to start Doctor Strange he says that I had to include this in my video else he's gonna punch me really hard in the stomach and you know I don't want him break his hand or anything so of course I'm gonna have to suggest Doctor Strange by Roger Stern. And I do see the charm in this, and I think it was where they were really starting to fully develop who Doctor Strange is as a character. And I just think there's a lot of creativity that goes into these issues, and Roger Stern really seems to be the first person who decided to take Doctor Strange and make Steven just as important to that role. So you do get to learn more about his personal life and his inner anguish, and how being in control of all this magic can affect him quite a bit. I reckon I'd have a great time though if it was me. But it very well might be the case that you like a lot of older titles, and that's fine and I do think that this would be one of the best jumping on points for you. If you printed some of this run in Epic Collection, so I know it is possible to get access to it, and it isn't like a modern title where you need to get all the issues to understand what's going on, you can just jump in and out for a few issues and that might be what you need, so that's why I'm going to put it on this list, and because I don't want to get punched in the stomach. People are looking for very different things in the comic community, and you might be somebody who really likes events. You're quite lucky because any big universe spanning event does normally include Doctor Strange in some capacity, but the one that I'm going to recommend is World War Hulk. That's because he actually had a more personal involvement in this and you actually might really like Hulk comics. And side note, if you want to know where to start reading the Hulk, I've already done a video on that. So if you want a story where you don't really mind seeing Doctor Strange being painted as a bit of an antagonist and following the Hulk for the most part and seeing a little bit of what Doctor Strange can do, then why not give this a go? I'm not saying that this is my number one recommendation, but at the end of the day, comics are supposed to be enjoyed. And if Hulk waging war against the entire planet, which apparently is contained all the way to just New York and having Doctor Strange involved in that is something that sounds like it'd be for you, then give this a go. The main event's pretty decent and enjoyable and the side story is a uh you know, they vary. Another non-Doctor Strange book that I'm going to recommend is Ultimate Spider-Man Ultimate Nights. This also got a nod in me where to start Moon Knight because I just think that this is a great starting point if you don't want to jump into a Doctor Strange book. And I know that that might sound counterintuitive to the purpose of this video, but at the end of the day, you might already be a Spider-Man fan. Because I think that these ultimate interpretations of Marvel characters that you might already know are really great jumping on points. And if I'm being honest, Doctor Strange was one of the ultimate characters that they took the least risk with. He's still authoritative, he is leading a team and he's going against the Mafia and he really gets irritated by Peter so you know, it all checks out. I can't lie though, I know I'm biased, I think Ultimate Spider-Man is just the best, I even made a video talking about it. Next up and back to some pure Doctor Strange goodness, I'm going to recommend Doctor Strange Sorcerer Supreme. If you want a very meaty series that you can proper sink into and start to read and you love a 90s style and you're a fan of just loads of words then this will definitely be for you. And I'm not saying use a lot of words as if it's a massive negative, I'm 
saying that as if you really like the literary aspect of it. But at the same time, it does have that 90s sensibility to it that it's not something that you do need to read beginning to end. But it does still have its own story arcs that are going on throughout this, and from the ones that I've read of this, I do think it's really enjoyable. And even though the 90s as a whole gets a massively bad rap, which I don't entirely agree with, even though I wasn't really reading comics back then, mostly because I was too busy being born, I do still think that are some great series, and this Doctor Strange one is one that a lot of fans point to, to say that this is the reason why we know who this character is today. I don't know if I've got enough knowledge to really agree with that entirely, but from what I've read of this, even though it has got a bit of a variant art style, I do think it'd be worth picking up if you just want years and years of Doctor Strange content. And over the course of this run, Strange, as you can probably imagine, he goes through a lot. He even ends up meeting up and having a fight with Morbius, and I am very, very good at keeping up with times and knowing what people like, and at the moment, seems like people are liking Morbius. I think. Now I'm going to be recommending a few Doctor Strange runs which might be a bit controversial but the first one is written by Don Cates. The reason why I say this is because it isn't even initially about Doctor Strange. But these were the issues that followed up after Jason Aaron so maybe if you're looking for a second book after picking up this omnibus this would be the one that you need to get. But Loki is now the Sorcerer Supreme because it was those couple of years where literally everything had to revolve around Loki. Great times. And admittedly this will throw you in at the deep end. It won't really give you a lot of time to catch up or understand what's happening if you didn't know beforehand. But the reason why I'm putting this on the list is because it shows you the scope of being Sorcerer Supreme and not just isolating it to Stephen Strange. Which yes was very difficult to say with my lisp. So if you did know about the importance of Loki around this time, if you've read something like Loki Agent of Asgard, then you might as well dip into this because I do think it'll enhance that reading experience. And then by that you will start to learn about Doctor Strange because it is about him learning to regain his ability as a Sorcerer Supreme. And maybe you don't want to go back to an origin story, maybe you want to see just how big the magical side of the Marvel Universe can be, then this is the one for you because it builds into Damnation which I know they did a complete collection of, and that was a damn fun event which featured a lot of heroes that often don't get a lot of time in the spotlight. So it's kind of the best of both worlds because you get a Doctor Strange story and then you get a Doctor Strange event so you know, win win. Again not necessarily a Stephen Strange book but I'm going to be recommending Strange Academy. This series started in the last few years and it's still ongoing at the time that I'm filming this video. It's written by Scotty Young and it's got art by Humberto Ramos and it's more about the functionality of Doctor Strange and the magic that he learns and how that can be taught to the next generation. Kind of gives me a little bit of similar vibes to something like the Future Foundation during Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four run, except for I don't want to punch all of these kids in the face. And I think this would be better suited for somebody who maybe is just getting into comics altogether because you will learn about a lot of new characters and it'll still sort of feature the essence of Doctor Strange whilst not entirely revolving around it. But the reason why Doctor Strange isn't in that last pick quite a lot is because of this next pick that I'm going to recommend, which is the current series which is just called Strange. And full disclaimer, there's only two issues of this out so far, I've only read one of them, but it might be years and years from now that you're watching this video, maybe Doctor Strange is like the biggest film franchise of all time, maybe it's beaten Avatar, you know it's the future, who knows what can happen. But I do get the feeling that it's a starting point for somebody who does want to get introduced into the magic side of the Marvel Universe, then this might be something worth jumping into. And it is a series that you can just go into your local comic shop and just pick up the issues as they're coming out now. And like I said, Clea is the Sorcerer Supreme of this series, and in the first issue alone she goes up against Doctor Strange, which is just a really easy win in my books because that's a villain that I just love. So yeah, hopefully the rest of the series is as entertaining as the first issue was, and this pans out to be a really great series, but I just don't think I've seen enough of this series so far to rule it out and say that it wouldn't be good for new readers. One thing that I won't forget though is the last recommendation that I'm going to put on this list, and it's none other than Doctor Strange by Mark fucking Wade. And it just baffles me at how overlooked this series is. It only came out in 2008, I wasn't even doing this channel back then. But it was a bit difficult making this video because even though Doctor Strange, at least in the comics, is definitely a B-tier superhero, like he's not someone that you completely forget about, but there isn't really a lot of go-to series that you can point to and say that that is the definitive jumping on point. However, for me, the one that I'd most likely recommend, besides something like Doctor Strange The Oath, would be the series that was done by Mark Wade. It is a little bit different and he is going on space adventures and he crosses paths with people like Galactus. I mean, gods, it's been a long day at work. And he just took Doctor Strange in a different direction which I really felt like this character needed and it reminded me a lot of what Mark Wade did when he was writing The Hulk. And with him going off planet, there's not a lot of baggage from previous series that you'd need to know. And because it came out after the movie had already been released, the characterization had changed a little bit so that it did reflect the Doctor Strange that was on the big screen. So if you want a more sci-fi take rather than it just being based purely 
purely in magic, then I definitely think that this would be the one for you. And it went on for quite a few story arcs to the point where he even returned to Earth by the end of it. So I think that there's a lot here to really catch you up if you did want to read any other Doctor Strange titles after this. But that's the video, hopefully you enjoyed it. In the comment section, let me know who you want to see me do a where to start on next. Do me a massive favor, share this video where you can. It definitely helps keep this series going. But until next time, just make sure that you stay safe and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof. See you at the next video.